Hello and welcome to AA Computers and Technology. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to bypass a dead CMOS battery using a DC power supply. And of course this little modification works for both desktops and laptops. So I came up with this idea about 10 minutes ago when I was trying to figure out a way to turn my IBM ThinkPad uh, laptop on. It was giving me the 161 and 163 dead CMOS battery errors uh, that these ThinkPads give you when they power up and then they won't let you boot into the operating system until you replace the CMOS battery. And I was really disappointed because I wanted to mess around with this laptop this week. I ordered a new battery but it's not supposed to get here till next week and I'm going to be busy next week so I really wanted to mess around with this laptop uh, this week and I was trying to figure out a way how and this little modification popped into my mind which is awesome. As you can see right now I have my IBM ThinkPad up and running Windows 95 and I'll go ahead and explain to you guys how I went ahead doing this modification. Alright before I go any farther I'm just going to give you guys the usual disclaimers. Um, the one big one is make sure you're grounded when you're doing this so you don't take out the computer that you are working on. Uh, the other one is that computers have a lot of high voltage components in them uh, such as capac capacitors especially in power supplies. Um, so be really careful when you're messing around with stuff like this uh, and keep in mind you're also using an, ex an external power supply so once again be careful with that too. And the last really big disclaimer uh, is if you take your computer apart laptop or desktop you could be possibly voiding your computer's warranty if you still have one on it. Uh, so if you still have your computer, if your computer is still under warranty I wouldn't suggest attempting this modification because you could void that warranty. And one last thing, if you're not confident doing this modification, please don't do it. Alright, so let's get started. What you're going to need for this modification is obviously a DC power supply, uh, something that's capable of output, outputting the same power uh, that your battery does. So I have a, uh, this battery that goes in my IBM ThinkPad is a 3 volt lithium ion battery. And right now I have it set to 3 volts and this power supply uh, is capable I think of putting out around 250 milliamps uh, somewhere around there. You're also going to need a pair of grip test leads. Let me go ahead and uh, zoom that in so you guys can see that better. These little uh, grip test leads. And I would highly suggest wearing a anti-static wrist wrap uh, during the disassembly and uh, modification process of the CMOS battery. And lastly of course you have to have the computer that you're going to perform the modification on. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what the laptop does with the dead CMOS battery in it so you guys don't think I'm tricking you uh, when I perform the modification. So I'm going to go ahead and open this laptop up and turn it on. Yep, and there we get our error. And yep, there's our error. So it's not going to let us boot into Windows 95 until we replace that CMOS battery. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So first off, you're going to have to find which section of metal uh, holds the negative and positive polarities of the battery. And as you can see, my focus isn't that great. But as you can see this side, you can see that little positive right there if I cover, yep. You can see this, the top side is positive and the bottom side is negative. And when you put that in, it makes contacts with the, uh, the metal uh, brackets in there. And then when you put it in, you can tell uh, which metal bracket is hitting which part of the battery. So right now we can see that the bottom little metal bracket in there is heading is hitting the bottom of the battery so that's obviously the uh, negative polarity bracket and then the one right here in the back is heading the edge of the positive polarity side and I'll show you that I'll just go ahead and throw it in real quick there you go and you can see right there see the bottom bracket is hitting the negative polarity polarity side and the back bracket right there is hitting the uh, the positive polarity side. You can't see it that well but I'm telling you uh, that's what's going on. 
Um, so this really depends on what kind of power supply you have, but I prefer to have my power supply on uh, before I hook up the leads to the little brackets because when I turn my power supply on for the first time, uh, it spikes to about, I think around eight volts uh, output and I don't want it to uh, fry my computer motherboard. So I just leave it on when I attach the little grip leads. Um, but once again, really depends on what kind of power supply you have. If your power supply doesn't spike when you turn it on, uh, you you won't have that problem. It does it doesn't matter. You can do it on or off. Um, but mine, I prefer to leave the power supply on. If, and if anyone's curious, I have the Elenco model XP-15 uh, DC voltage variable uh, DC variable voltage power supply. And this is about 20 bucks off Amazon. I'll post in the link if anyone uh, wants to take a look at it. Uh, it comes in the kit, and you have to assemble it yourself. Alright, so now it's time to hook up the power supply. Uh, and you can do negative polarity or positive polarity first. Um, it's your choice, whichever is easier. I'm going to do the positive test lead first. And I'm just going to take my positive test lead, find a place to place it on the positive bracket right here. No, oh, if I can get my camera. There you go. I should really be using a tripod, but uh, nope, too lazy for that. And I'm just going to place it. Did I get it? Just gonna place it on my positive uh, bracket right there, and I'm gonna take my negative test lead and attach it to the negative polarity bracket. I'm gonna do it on the other side so they don't short. No, oh, come on. And there you go. You move them apart a little bit. Just really want to make sure they don't short. And there you go, it's all hooked up, and we can go ahead and boot up this computer. Yeah, so I just looked at that clip, and the video quality wasn't exactly the best, so I'll go ahead and throw up some high resolution pictures uh, in the video when I get to editing, and it should come up right after this before we take a look at the computer running. So let's go ahead and power up the laptop. I have the power supply plugged into the laptop. I have our test leads hooked up to our CMOS battery holder. And let's go ahead and see if the modification worked. There we go. This is a weird angle to uh, take video from. But... We got error 161 and 163 still. Oh, you know what? I think first I have to set the date and then it should be fine. I think once I set the date, it should be okay. And then uh, shut down and power back on. There we go. Powering back on. Did we get the errors? Nope, we passed the uh, startup test and we didn't get those CMOS batteries, battery errors. So we're all good. Now let me go ahead and get past all this stuff. I haven't even looked at um, what programs are on this laptop yet. Oh, Microsoft scan disk. Scan disk is now checking the following. Oh, I don't want to do this. Don't fix it. All right. Yeah, once again, I said I, I haven't messed around with this laptop that much, so uh, still some funny stuff going on with it, but we should be able to boot into Windows 95 right about now. Hmm, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll speed this up a little bit. Oh, maybe not. You know, there's obviously, uh, it's detecting something corrupt in the file system. I'll have to check that out later.
hard drive is really working. <laughs> and here we go with all of our uh, desktop shortcuts loaded up. Um, and we got past the uh, error screen and the startup tests. And I think we are good to go. I think I'll move back just a little bit. The laptop is still running fine with the uh, power supply modification hooked up to it. And I think that uh, pretty much concludes this video. And the laptop's hard drive is still struggling to open all the background programs uh, that this computer is trying to run upon startup. This computer has so much junk on it. Um, but anyway, that's about it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, just post a comment in the comments section. Please don't forget to subscribe, and please don't forget to like this video. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.